let's talk about the order in which to learn and implement lymphatic drainage. Now, if you're new, this is a great video to listen to. If you're experienced, this is a great video to listen to. And if you're looking to expand your knowledge, this is gonna be a great video to listen to because I'm gonna tell you exactly how I personally teach lymphatic drainage and why I do it the way that I do. Now, I've been doing it for years. I've been doing it on people since 2010. And so this isn't new to me. This is something that I've been doing forever. And I'll explain to you an alternative based on maybe what you're thinking and where you're at. So let's dive in as to exactly what to do, how to implement, and then how to build to get the most out of your lymphatic drainage routines. All right, first and foremost, always, 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 I always start with the specific seven. Now, why I do that is twofold. One, our lymph nodes, because the specific seven are specifically clearing the lymph nodes, the major, the main lymph nodes, which I call the specific seven, in order to get maximum ability for your body to drain. Now, the specific specific seven is scattered throughout the body, which is going to encourage full body drainage, meaning the lymph fluid in your vessels, giving it the opportunity to drain. Because if your lymph nodes are congested, the fluid in the vessels, there's nowhere for it to move. So we got to decongest the lymph nodes before we can get the lymph fluid in the vessels to move. So that's the first thing. Learning that first and foremost. After that comes diaphragmatic breathing. Now you might be like, wait a minute, what? I thought we were talking about lymphatic drainage here. We are. Diaphragmatic breathing is super, super, super important. Diaphragmatic breathing acts as the pump for your lymphatic system. Now remember how I always say your lymph doesn't have a pump? It doesn't. It doesn't have a heart like your circulatory system. But the diaphragm, when it's being used properly during inhalation and exhalation, it's pumping. And what it's doing is it's ultimately massaging your internal organs. So your diaphragmatic breathing is going to help move your deep lymph. All of the lymph nodes that we were talking about are superficial, meaning we're addressing the superficial lymph when we're doing lymph nodes. And honestly, when we're doing some of the manual stuff, which I'll get to in a minute. But Diaphragmatic breathing is what's gonna help pull the lymphatic fluid from your belly button all the way down to your toes, up into the thoracic duct, which runs essentially along your spine and drains at your left collarbone. So if we're not properly diaphragmatic breathing, we're not gonna be moving a good portion of our lymph because it just doesn't have the ability to move. So the next thing that I always teach and that I really focus on, especially in my academy, is proper diaphragmatic breathing. And it's gonna do twofold for you. It's going to one, move your lymph, your deep lymph, all the lymph from your legs and your lower abdomen, but it's also gonna stimulate your parasympathetic nervous system. Why that's important is remember, our body cannot drain if it's stuck in sympathetic overload. So if you're stuck in sympathetic dominance, that's fight, flight, freeze, fawn, any of those, your body's not draining. Your body's more concerned over here with surviving. Drainage, rest, digest, and drain, I know I throw that one in because obviously drainage is uber important in my eyes and it should be in everybody's if I'm being honest, but drainage, we, our body can't do this if it's more concerned with survival. So diaphragmatic breathing is ultimately going to tell your body it's safe. It's safe and it's capable and able to drain. So diaphragmatic breathing is number two. That's the second thing we gotta work on. After that, I'm gonna go to the total 12 lymph nodes. Now you might be like, well, wait, why didn't you just start with that? Here's Here's the thing, some people have more congestion than others. My goal with the specific seven is to get people a simple, straight to the point routine that's not gonna take a ton of time, that everybody can do every day without a whole lot of effort. That's the specific seven. Total 12 is when we're going to be literally addressing more of our head, more of our hands and like forearm, more of like our feet. So if you're somebody that has more congestion, total 12 is definitely the next step. We're ultimately really clearing everything so that all of the lymphatic fluid in our vessels have the opportunity to drain. So that's number three. Now, now we're switching gears. We're going from lymph nodes to lymph vessels. So the next thing I recommend is manual lymphatic massage of the body, okay? Now, why that's important is if you're not noticing, I'm really going by what are we gonna get the biggest bang for our efforts? And doing lymphatic drainage of the body is going to ultimately address a lot 
of the lymphatic fluid ultimately. And so knowing the exact pressure, the direction, the order, which still applies for the lymph nodes, but manual massage is a little different. There's areas of our body where we're moving fluid up and then there's areas of our body where we're moving fluid down because of where it drains into. Now I see a lot of people teaching dry brushing, abdominal massage, and they're not really moving the fluid to the location where it actually drains. So it's not gonna be quite as effective as if you were to move it where it needs to go, right? Like staying on the road versus like off-roading. They're off-roading sometimes. And yeah, it could be fun, but it's gonna be a lot harder, a lot more jarring, and you're not likely to get the same results. So if you're somebody that has congestion and you can, you know it, you can feel it, you can see it, whether it's symptoms or literally lymphatic fluid, doing it in the right direction is super duper important. Now, after we learn the direction of where to move the fluid using our hands with gentle stretch, then we can go and do the face. Now, you might be like, well, I'm more interested in the face. I really don't care about the body. Like, I don't have any issues in my feet or my hands. Here's the thing. Majority of our fluid is in our body. And if we have stagnation, like we're not properly diaphragmatic breathing, we sit a lot, we wear tight clothes, that congestion of our sewage water, right? Because that's really what lymphatic fluid is, is it's our sewage water, sits there and dries inflammation. And inflammation is over time, when it becomes chronic, becomes problematic. So I'm all about, let's get the most bang for our buck. And then we can go and do some of the more fine tuning things. Now, the next, like I said, is the facial lymph nodes. So learning how and the order in which to open them so that you get maximum benefit is going to be super important. Again, pressure, direction, order, facial comes next. And I guess you probably know what I'm gonna say next. What comes after facial lymph nodes? Facial massage. So knowing which direction to move the fluid to get the maximum drainage. Now, again, making sure that those major lymph nodes are clear, especially from the total 12, is important because there's two more lymph nodes that we clear in the 12 in our head and neck that's going to influence how our face drains. So all of our, like the total 12 really is where majority of the lymphatic fluid drains in two. They're like the big ones. And then all of these other smaller ones are going to drain the more fine, delicate like features and areas. So manual massage of the face comes next. So that's the order in which I teach them. And you might be like, Dr. Caitlin, where are the tools? Why can't I just pick up a tool? Let me tell you. Why I don't jump into tools, whether it's a dry brush, a gua sha, a paddle, I don't jump into those because what happens is if we don't understand how to use our hands and the pressure with our hands, we are not gonna understand the pressure when it comes to adding in a tool. What I've seen happen over and over and over again is people literally go after it. And what happens more times than not is they actually don't get benefits. And I'm talking specifically about people that truly have lymphatic congestion, where they have fluid retention, where they have symptoms. And so if you're doing this just more as like, it's a fad, influencers are doing it, I wanna stay young, which don't get me wrong, it is going to help you stay young because when we remove the waste, it prevents inflammation, it reduces fine lines and wrinkles, like it does all the things. But if you have fine lines and wrinkles, if you have fluid retention, you gotta do it in the right order with the right pressure. So after you learn how to use your hands, that's when the tools come in. So let's talk about the tools like gua sha. I use gua sha differently. I use gua sha more for not like smoothing things out if I'm being honest and my face is a little sticky right now because of my serum so it's not gliding but I don't use it the way that most influencers use it because one most of them aren't trained in it properly two if you're gonna learn true gua sha it really should be from somebody who does oriental medicine like traditional Chinese medicine with a background in gua sha. Now how I use gua sha, it is more of the traditional way, which is to break up the adhesions. So I use gua sha to break up fascial adhesions, which then helps drainage. Why? Fascial adhesions prevent lymphatic fluid from draining. So when I teach gua sha, I'm teaching not this like gentle soothing 
you know, that's not how I'm teaching it. I'm teaching it to like break up the adhesions, break up the scar tissue so that your lymphatic fluid can flow. Dry brushing. You gotta know the direction when you are dry brushing, just like the manual lymphatic massage, that's where the hands come in before you can implement this. Like I said, if you're moving fluid to an area where it's not going to drain, that's not where it drains to, you're not gonna get the same benefits. Plus, I see people scraping the ever-loving, pardon my language, out of their skin. That's not what we wanna do. Yes, dry brushing is gonna also exfoliate, it's gonna open up the pores, it has a lot of benefits, but we should not have scratches and be super duper red after dry brushing, especially if our goal is lymphatic drainage. So I will put a dry brush in somebody's hands once they understand understand the order or the direction to move things. Now let's talk about rebounding and vibration. Now for somebody that has conditions, whether it be lymphedema, lipedema, I may move, you know, using vibration plates or using rebounders right after learning how to open up the total 12. Now why I might do that is because they're going to be able to get the benefits from the vibration from the rebounding without fully understanding the direction to move the fluid because you're not you're not like moving the fluid yourself. You're standing on something that's going to help move the fluid. And so I may move that forward. But usually I want people to learn the lymphatic system where it drains so that they can get the most out of it because there might be times where we have to be spot specific, meaning we may have an injury or we may end up with a surgery that we need to be more intentional in that area. And the only way we can be more intentional is if we understand the physiology, which is what we learn in the beginning. So I may push those forward, like I said, after the total 12, and I may even push the vibration ball to after the total 12, depending upon the person. But usually for me, I put the tools aside because I want people to learn what it feels like using their hands versus adding a tool in. Now, you can interchange all of these tools, dry brush, gua sha, vibration ball. I would probably put vibration ball before the dry brush and the gua sha because this you can really use for lymph node stimulation, which is fantastic, especially if you have a lot of congestion in your lymph nodes. But the other tools, I do recommend learning the manual lymphatic massage first before incorporating them. So I hope this opens up your, your eyes as to how to look at lymphatic drainage, how I look at lymphatic drainage, how I teach it, why I teach it the way that I teach it. And ultimately what it boils down to is when you understand physiology and you can implement physiology, you're then going to be able to get the best results. Not to mention, you can then manipulate and make changes based on your specific body and situation, which I think is so important. So if this was helpful, let me know. I'd love to know your guys' feedback and comments. If you're new here, I would be so incredibly honored if you hit that subscribe button to join me and learn more about all things drainage with a heavy focus on our lymphatic system. Thanks for being here and happy draining.